tonight two teams in playoff contention that just joined their cities and their new fan bases a year ago Denver and New Orleans two of the newer kids on the block trying to make a splash in the playoffs coming up but still some work to do in the regular season and a win tonight would go a long way to accomplishing those goals who will take it tonight in the week 10 game night game starts right now welcome to new orleans see i had it right written down in the script to just stumble through the last uh, two lines of the uh, intro Alongside Sham Varner, Stephen Mullinex, I am Cameron Irvine, Lieutenant General Russell Honore Memorial Stadium. For the MeUndies UVO Fan Night Game of the Week, I just had to do it. Stephen, how you doing? I'm doing great. Doing better than you, obviously. Uh, this game, can't wait to, these, like you said, two new kids on the block, right? These guys are in playoff contention. These are two of the top teams in the SFL and so young, so talented. We're going to see a great matchup tonight. Coin toss coming up next. Bart, good to see you again. And we're actually going to take a short break. We've got some, uh, some presentation issues that we have to correct. Uh, give us a few minutes. We'll be back here in a moment. All right, let's get it rolling. Denver will call the toss. New Orleans has won the toss and chooses to receive. Steven, what are your keys to the game tonight? Cam, for me, for Denver, they've got to shut down the Pharaoh's deep passing attack. That means shutting down Deezer Powell, the number one wide receiver in the SFL, averaging a whopping 21.5 yards per catch. They're going to use... Uh, Denver's going to use strong safety Nicholas Varner and his nine interceptions, which leads the league to help stop him. For New Orleans, it's all about stopping Jared McChesney, that great running back. So here we go. Kickoff is upon us. The ball's on the tee and the hands in the air. Denver, kick it. We're underway. This from two yards deep in the end zone, and Aaron Arrington returns it out to the 24 yard line. And uh, let's meet the uh, uh, New Orleans Pharaohs. Star players offensively led by Xander Gold, the number one pick two seasons ago. Yeah, Cam, 2,500 yards already this season. Uh, with uh, Still got three games to go, 24 touchdowns. That's number one here in the SFL this season so far. Hand off to Logan Jack on the first play, and Jack picks up eight yards. The New Orleans Pharaohs in their alt grays tonight, all grays with the gold numbers, purple trim, and Denver in the blue and white. Well, Cam, they have a, uh, they have actually four really great stars here on offense that they use. We talked about gold. We saw Jack, wide receiver Matt Wolf, and wide receiver Diesel Powell, excellent on the outside. Going to backfield, handoff Jack again, and Logan Jack's got a first down up to the 37-yard line. A four-yard pickup. Good start for the Pharaohs' offense. Yeah, Cam, and this guy, Logan Jack, the number 10 overall pick in the SFL draft. This rookie's been amazing. Not only does he already have 1,000 yards rushing this season, 10 rushing touchdowns, but an amazing 76 receptions to lead this team. First and 10 at the 37 yard line as Xander Gold will throw a bomb and it's nearly intercepted. Fantastic job on the outside for the Nightwings. And we'll, we'll get a look at their 
uh, star players here as well on the defensive side, led by B.J. Armstrong, Matthew Lee, the corners. Uh, Lee with that last deflection. Yeah, yeah, Cam, and this is one of the best secondaries here in the SFL. And they need to be that tonight in order to stop deep threats like Deezer Powell, like you just saw. Second down and 10 at the 37, and Gold on his second pass attempt. This time we'll kick it out to Jack. He'll rumble over a defender and pick up six on the play. Brings up a manageable third down and four at the 43-yard line. Cam, coming into this game, the Pharaohs had the fifth best scoring offense in the SFL, averaging 30 points a game, and the seventh best passing offense, nearly 300 yards a game at 288. Third and four, trips off the left side for New Orleans. And Gold going to throw it. Gold against the blitz from the back side. The pass is caught by Deezer Powell in double coverage. Pelican was over there along with Marty McCree. And that's enough for a Pharaoh's first down. Cam, what a throw here by Xander Gold. Not going to get a chance to see the replay, but he really just laid it there in there perfectly. Although his receiver was covered by two defenders, but there is no defense against the perfect pass. Let us know how our levels are in the chat. Hand off to Logan Jack. And Jack dismisses a defender, picks up four more. That was Mac Attack trying to make the stop, and he got shellacked. Number 38 with attack. I want to say Yak, but just to rhyme with you, Cam. <laughs> but I know that Jack doesn't like me to do that, so I'm going to refrain. But really got to like the balance and the ease with which uh, the Pharaohs are moving down the field right now. Second down and six, Gold to throw. Gold fires outside, wide open. That's Matt Wolf for a first down of the Denver 23. And New Orleans here at home is making quick work of this Nightwings defense. This drive nearly now three minutes. And I think you expect this, Cam. You know, if you're at home, this home field advantage, you get the ball, you want the ball, you want to try and go down and score and put this Denver offense behind the eight ball early. First down and 10 at the 23. Three receivers, two off the right side for Gold. And a nickel look for the Nightwings defense. This is Gold firing outside again complete. That's Pal, a four yard gain. Xander Gold's off to a five of six start. And we're seeing a lot of Deezer Pal. And Deezer Pal is the name everybody knows here in the league. Maybe the greatest free agent ad ever in SFL history, just based on the player that he was at Oklahoma City and what he's been this season. Second down and six at the 20. Seven and a half to go in the first quarter. No score, but the Pharaohs driving. Gold going to the end zone. Pass is knocked up in the air and nearly intercepted. That knocked away initially by Nicholas Warner. Only the second incompletion, but that's two passes defended now for the Denver secondary. And Gold only has eyes for Powell right now, and that's surprising. Powell only has 59 receptions on the season. Matt Wolf on the other side, the six foot six, 240 receiver, has 58 receptions. Just one catch in between, but Powell gets all the praise. Third down and six. Out of the gun is Gold with split backs next to him. Gold going to throw. All kinds of time. Fires middle. Caught at the three yard line and stumbling down to the two. Gold now five of seven for 57 yards on the opening drive. That pass hauled in uh, by Mickey Bischoff. And Cam, this is all about that offensive line, giving Gold time to find his tight end. And if you give this kid enough time, the kid with the golden arm, he's going to find receivers open. He's going to throw them open. You just, you got to get more and better pass rush on and off Logan Jack, and Jack will get into the end zone for a New Orleans touchdown, and what an opening drive on the game of the week here on Twitch. New Orleans goes right down the field and punches it in. And this is what you want to do against a 7-1 team. You want to punch them right in the mouth from the word go. Get the home crowd even more on your side. Get that momentum on your side. And now put the onus on Denver's offense to get them back in this game. That drive, four minutes and eight seconds. And Denver's offense, very high powered, very prolific. We know Jared McChesney, who's been passed up uh, in just here in the last couple of weeks in rushing, but still a very skilled running back. That extra point is good. 
And New Orleans, on their opening drive, scores a touchdown. Steven, they wanted the ball first. They got it and scored seven. Yeah, I love that mentality. Let's go out there. Let's attack them. Let's show this Nightwing team who we are and dare them to get back into this game. So back to return is Vega. Vega has three uh, return touchdowns this season. Two kickoffs and one punt, despite not really being a focal point of this offense. He returns it up to the 29-yard line. And we get a look at Josh Miller and the rest of this Denver offense. Jared McChesney, uh, McChesney Giacomo Jones, Logan Keel, and Hiapo Kinloa. Yeah, Cam, and, and a lot of the praise and a lot of the publicity goes to McChesney because he's such a great running back, 1,172 yards, 11 touchdowns on the season. But also remember, this Denver team's only played eight games where most other teams have played nine. So he's putting up great numbers despite being a game down most running backs. First and 10 of the 29, they'll start with a McChesney handoff. He'll break through a tackle. Look at McChesney turning the legs for a nine-yard gain up to the 38-yard line. And it's going to be a big battle between McChesney and this very talented Pharaohs linebacker core with Batir and McDaniel. Those two guys have got to get on top of this Denver running back if they're going to have a chance to win this game. 6.22 to go first quarter. Two in the backfield for the Night Wings. One at the top of the screen. That's Jones. Hand off McChesney again. McChesney met at the line by Mac McDaniel, one of the best open field tacklers in the SFL to bring up third and one. Yeah, Cam, one of the best run defending linebackers. This is a guy's a run stopper, and we've seen him go toe to toe with the SFL's best and win a majority of those battles. Out of the gun is Miller now on third and one. May throw for it here. Miller's first pass of the night. And he flips it outside, caught Hayato Kinloa with his first catch. He very strangely had no catches, I think, Stephen, in that game that that uh, we called against Chicago, but I'm picking it up there. Yeah, this is a talented kid, you know, the fourth overall pick in the draft, and he just got blanketed in that previous game. But good to see the young tight end get involved early here, and good to see Miller just uh, maybe start to, to build some momentum of his own. So this team is not so reliant on their all-pro running back. 5.25 to go in the first quarter. Both offenses finding success and moving the football here. Trips off the right side for Miller. Miller all kinds of time. Then hit as he threw and it's intercepted. The 47-yard line in the flat. That is Roloman Hood. And Hood's going to take it all the way for a pick six. Touchdown, New Orleans. Cam, what an amazing play by the quarterback here. Really just eyeing, looking right into the quarterback's eyes. Miller gets hit, that affects the throw slightly, enough for Hood, the lanky corner that we've seen come up big and big games, comes up big here in the first quarter and gives his team a 13-0 lead. That was a stunner, and maybe that last second pressure that you yes. saw on Miller forcing a bad throw, and it's all Pharaohs here in the first quarter. The chat saying that Ray West... Well, Ray West saying that it was him with the hit inside. And you can only get that in the SFL, a player telling you what play he made live on the air. And then Rolliman Hood with the INT going the other way. And uh, man, that is a huge play. Right, and you gotta trust that source, right? Right from the player's mouth himself. But look, Ray West is a converted linebacker. He used to be a linebacker for the Dallas Roughnecks. Now he's a defensive tackle, added some pounds, 10 and a half sacks on the season, and making plays happen in the backfield. That was the second interception for Hood. As from the seven yard line, Vega returns up to the 29 yard line. Rolliman Hood playing in his second season in the SFL, both with New Orleans. That was his first defensive touchdown, so congratulations, Rolliman Hood. That was a phenomenal play. Yeah, when we talk about Hood, we talk about lanky, long cornerback, six foot three, 190 pounds. Despite only having two interceptions on the season now, he does have 10 pass defense, which shows you he's got those big, long arms. Three receivers, two to the left side for Miller. Miller dropping back to throw, and Miller going long to Kinloa, caught for a first down to the 48-yard line. Boy, fireworks aplenty here in the first quarter. Well, I love Kinloa's able, ability to box out the defender here. And his quarterback just lays it over his shoulder, 
and he's able just to make sure that that him and only him gets a chance at catching that ball and bringing it in the old bread basket there. First and right. ten of the 48. 4.45 to go in the first quarter. Kinloa already with two deep catches down the field. Eye formation for Miller and the Nightwings. Down two touchdowns early on the road. Never where you want to be. That's Logan Keel breaking two tackles and then getting laid out of the 31-yard line. That's a pickup of 21. Tank Bennett on the tackle. And I think this is dangerous, Cam, for teams who underestimate this receiver core. They don't have the big flashy numbers some other teams do, but they're just all, all equally good and can be utilized at any time. And Miller likes to spread the ball around. And so I know so many defenses in the NFL are keyed in on stopping McChesney, but you can't forget this trio of very talented pass catchers. Two in the backfield, one receiver at the bottom of the screen. Jones still yet to be targeted. McChesney first carry of the drive. Really nice trap play up the middle. Got 11, maybe 10 and a half, just into the red zone of New Orleans. Well, I'll take that all day. A run that gets you the full 10, gets you another first down, moves the chains. Boy, that what that does for an offense, it's inexplicable. Take that from a guy who used to pass the ball all the time. Yes, the run game matters here in the SFL. 3.45 to go in the first quarter. 14-0 New Orleans on top of Denver. Three receivers. That's Keel at the bottom. And Miller going to throw. Miller looking around, looks inside, and Giacomo Jones in traffic makes a catch, running a little crossing pattern to, uh, for a five-yard gain to the 15. And Cam, if Miller would have just looked to his left, and saw McChesney on a wheel route. He was wide open. There was not a defender within 15 yards of him. That would have been a touchdown, but he settles for the pass down the middle. 3.06 to go in the first quarter. And showing pressure, New Orleans. They're going to stay at the line. McChesney going to blow right past it. Finds a soft spot there up front and has a first and goal to the eight. Well, give a lot of credit to the center. Jack Hungry really led the way right through the hole. Gave McChesney a blueprint of where to go. Picks up the block and, and springs him for an extra five yards there. So Denver, after the pick six, they are moving the ball down the field on this uh, Pharaoh's, uh, this Pharaoh's defense that has been quite good for much of the season, very physical team. Haven't seen as much press as we've seen from them in previous weeks. Miller back to pass, flying it into the quarter of the end zone. They call that a touchdown, Stephen, for Denver. Wow, Cam, we're going to need to take a look at this. Uh, I thought he was out of bounds, but let's take a look at the replay. I'm sure everybody at home is looking oh, at his feet. he's definitely out. He, he's way out. They've got to call a challenge here. Yeah, and I don't think, I don't think there's any doubt here if they were to give this to Denver, that would be really surprising. Our first Harry's close shave, close call challenge of the night. And let's see it again. And Cam, what really upsets me about this, this is a waste of a challenge in the sense that the ref should have never called this a touchdown. So now a team is forced to use their challenge flag and possibly lose a timeout later down the road. Yeah, I agree with you. That's a good point, especially in a game that appears uh, like it's going to be a tight one as Denver quickly responding to that pick six. And uh, But they're going to have to try again from eight yards out. Second and goal from the eight with 2.29 to go in the first quarter. Here's that press coverage that New Orleans has been so good at much of the year. There is nobody in the middle of the field. Miller back to pass. Miller going down the middle of the pass. is caught for a touchdown and then a late hit flag at the end of it. That is Vega. And so there's MeUndies laundry on the field here, but I think that touchdown finally is going to stand. Yeah, Cam, and you called it exactly right. That press coverage left the middle of the field wide open and vulnerable. Yeah. And his quarterback, Miller, were able to identify each other and make that uh, that post pattern happen right there in the center of the end zone. Easy pitch and catch. Denver touchdown. So Miller makes the play, and uh, it's a 14-6 to ball game. The extra point coming up from the kicker. 
That's Kramer Jackman. Of course, Jackman has had a phenomenal season. 19th pick in the draft as that extra point is up and good, and it's 14-7. Yeah, 19th pick in the draft and a perfect 19 of 19 right now from on field goal attempts. So while we wait for the kickoff, we remind you that from shave sets to handles, Harry's provides quality craftsmanship. Made in Germany, we make Harry's products from the finest materials and ingredients to ensure they perform as well as they possibly can. Use the coupon code SIMULATIONFL at purchase from harrys.com. A portion of your purchase supports the SFL Harry's official razor of the SFL. This is Arrington on the return, makes a man miss and gets up to the 24-yard line. So what an answer for Denver. They fall down 14-0 on a pick six. Rolliman Hood's first of his career, but come right back and score a touchdown, proving why they're 7-1 this season. Yeah, and I think it's a warning sign to the Pharaohs. You cannot let up. This is a team that went seven straight victories prior to their first loss last week to London. So this is a team that is ultra dangerous. You cannot let up offensively. New Orleans defense giving up just 22.8 points a game. That's seventh in the SFL. This is Gold going deep. Gold hit as he threw that pass nearly intercepted. Knocked away there by Deontay Phillips. But uh, Gold facing some pressure and to get rid of it. Yeah, I think holding the ball just a tick too long. It does move up in the pocket, but that pressure gets him in the back. Uh, I still think, though, that, that that's just a great play by the defender there, the linebacker, number 55. I'm going to get a big paw on it, uh, that uh, being uh, Dante Phillips. Denver's defense not too shabby either. Ninth in the league, giving up 23.25 points per game. 2.15 to go in the first. It's no surprise. Baltimore, Alaska, Mexico City, Queen City, Chicago. Top five defenses, all with winning records in the SFL. Second and 10 at the 24 for Gold. And Gold will hand it off to Jack. And Logan Jack gets rid of three. Clipping the wings on his way to the 40. Well, Cam, we've seen it tonight. You know, that inside draw kind of play, that, that strong, that strong, running force that is Jack will get you those extra yards after contact absolutely destroying defenders there chat shout out Sabri Allen 88 uh, Palater 303 J signals Moonfire Dead Knight 57 Xander Gold Justin J uh, Eric JDWA Schaefer 88 is also in there as Jack picks up three Denver Nightwings direct 900 B.J. Armstrong, lots of the SFL Nation. Wendy White also in the chat. So welcome to the game of the week. Cam, how many, how many times have we seen it where the offenses get off to a really great start and then we start to see these defenses clamp down? I fully expect that to happen here as we go into the second quarter. Second and seven at the 43. Two backs and one receiver. The handoff goes to Jack again. Look at that offensive line. Beautiful blocking. First and 10 to the 47 for New Orleans. Yeah, that makes it pretty easy when you've got two, two your offensive line blocking like that in front of you and two open blockers just running down the field. That means your, your big uglies did a really good job on that play. MeUndies are the world's most comfortable underwear. Visit MeUndies.com slash SimulationFL for 15% off your purchase, which will help support the SFL through our partnership as Gold dumps that one off to Jack. Pass the 45 and to the 42 for a five-yard gain. Give the gift of comfort with 100% satisfaction guarantee. Free shipping and return signature soft and stretchy MeUndies. And Cam, we've seen this from Jack before. Kind of just uh, using him in every facet of the game as the running back, as a wide receiver, and we could see him possibly get subbed out on these longer drives because he's just, he's just tired. Second down, 18 seconds. Very fast-moving first quarter here. New Orleans is up 14-7. to seven. The handoff goes to Jack running right, and Logan Jack is stuffed. Only a two-yard gain. That was the best Denver has done against the run tonight. Bailey Baca and Nicholas Warner in there to make the stop, and that ends... The first quarter of play, despite three touchdowns, very fast-moving quarter. New Orleans has the early advantage, 14-7 over Denver. And as we move into the second quarter, here is your up-to-date playoff picture. Anything catch your eye, Stephen? Well, Cam, you know, I've always said it, the cream rises to the top, and we're seeing some of the, the, the best teams in the NFL that have traditionally been great 
they're starting to rise, and then we're seeing some new up-and-comers like these two teams here tonight that are on the board as well. And off the Jack, he will not get there. On third down and three, Logan Jack is put in the ground. That's Mike Sawchuk with the tackle, the week two signing for Denver, and that has paid off big time. He has had a great season. Yeah, 78 tackles despite coming in at week two. I mean, this guy is a tackling machine in camp. That was critical right there, right on the edge of field goal range. New Orleans had an opportunity to put up some more points, and they got stonewalled. We'll try to pin Denver deep now. The first punt of the night for New Orleans. Oh, man, caught that in the air. Did uh, number 25, Jules Howard, but couldn't stop his momentum quick enough, and Josh Miller will start with it on the 30-yard line. So uh, New Orleans trying to move to 7-3. and three. If they get a win tonight, Denver's lead on the SFL would be just a half a game. And uh, that certainly would start to make some night wings a little bit nervous, I would think. Really heavy set here with two in the backfield. And they're going to hand it off to McChesney. Old school football. Jared McChesney gets nine to the 29-yard line. Well, you see your, your, your main stallion making runs like that. It's going to fill you with confidence. But, Cam, Denver, you know, they've got to be a little bit worried. Sure, they're still 7-1, and one, but they are coming off a loss. So you want to back that up. Now that you've got that loss, you know, you've got the undefeated season off your shoulders. You want to back that up with the win to show that was a fluke. Mello Taylor subscribing for two months in a row. Appreciate that as McChesney's not going to pick up the first down. Also, the Dead Knight subscribing with Twitch Prime in the chat. So we appreciate all of your support. AJ Pick 6 is the top cheerer of the week unless somebody wants to top him and take his prize. Third and inches at the 30. 9.32 to go in the first half. 14-7 New Orleans with two in the backfield. The handoff goes to McChesney. McChesney is not going to get it. What a stop right at the sticks. A combo tackle there. In there first uh, was Andre Daniels forcing the fourth and inches. Well, a rare mistake from McChesney, McChesney, excuse me, should have just went north-south, should have went right straight through the offensive line, but chose to try and break it to the outside, and that was a deadly mistake here causing a fourth down. So with three and out for the Nightwings, as predicted, uh, Stephen, both defenses tightening up a little bit after a flurry of activity on the first few drives as Arrington returns that one up to the 36-yard line. Well, if you've missed... Anything from Week 10 so far here? Your Week 10 headlines. Mike Dazzo moved into number two all-time in passing yards. Baltimore now 6-3. and three. The ATM is named by Andy Hamilton. Got it done in a sloppy win for the Aztecs. Uh, upset special. Houston taking out Tallahassee. Uh, Tulsa won today in overtime, and Oklahoma City got back in it. As the handoff goes to Logan Jack, Oklahoma City... Uh, beat St. Louis, by the way. Jack picks up a first down to the 48-yard line. But, Stephen, that, once again, the number one team in the power rankings fell. I don't think you want to be number one in the rankings at this point. Yeah, it's a bit of a curse, isn't it? Uh, but you know what? I think a lot of guys agree. That's a subjective ranking. And, and, and you know, teams, they, they're, they're, they have to play for it no matter what. You're going to have to play on the field regardless of what it says in this objective rank. First and 10 of the 48. This is Gold trying to extend the Pharaohs' lead pass. Caught down the sideline. First down to the 35-yard line. Really nice pickup there. That is number 86, Joel Hart, the tight end. Numbers just a touch. Hard to read those sixes and zeros outside. Cam, we talked about the power rankings. I know that several of the Nightwings uh, team and roster were upset that they, they really felt like they were been uh, not represented well in the rankings, although they lead the standings in the league, you know. And and I would say to them, you guys are proving it on the field. Who cares what people write about? First and 10 of the 35. This is Jack breaking through a tackle, picking up nine. Logan Jack is gashing the night wings up the middle. Both of these teams old school football, but right now New Orleans beating Denver at their own game. Well, clearly... Uh, you know, New Orleans believes that Denver's soft in the middle. And it's hard to believe when you've got a guy like Bailey Baca in the middle for you patrolling that defensive line. But it's worked to, to wonders here uh, early. Second and one of the 25 handoff to Jack. He's going to get another first down up to the 23.
First and 10 at the 23 yard line, 7.08 to go in the first half, 14-7. New Orleans on top of Denver. Jack is the low man in the backfield, a tight set here for the Pharaohs with those purple shoulders. And they'll flip it out to Jack. Jack has not been too involved in the passing game so far tonight, but he gets a first and goal all the way out to the nine yard line. Yeah, and that's a play that you will see over and over again from this offense. They love to run in that power set and then swing Jack to the outside for these plays with a couple blockers in front of him. And we've seen how powerful he is running down the middle. He, he's just as powerful as a receiver on the outside. Let us know if Stevens uh, lost a little bit off his mic. Uh, Matt Wilson saying, Stephen, that you're hot in more ways than one. So I love that man. Okay. I love him. <laughs> Kudos to you. First and goal at the nine, 6.43 to go in the first half. Trips off the left side for New Orleans, trying to get back up by two scores. They had a 14-0 lead. This is gold down the middle, touchdown to Matt Wolf. Wide open, pitch and catch, and New Orleans is back up by 13. Yeah, Cam, look, they made it look easy, and it was all initially on the back of Logan Jack. We saw him in the passing game, we saw him as a runner, and then they get you with a guy that's not talked about enough in this league, Matt Wolf. Did I hear you say earlier in the broadcast that uh, that Logan Jack did not like the Yak nickname? Yeah, yeah, I just noticed it in chat. And he just said, hey, I'm not a Yak. Didn't, wasn't down with it. I totally understand. You want a, you want a nickname that uh, you can be proud of. I, I, I'm i totally cool. Sounds like Ray Bentley uh, might be available uh, for, for a new nickname as that uh, extra point is good. For New Orleans, it's 21 to seven. They lead Denver, Denver, but the last time the Pharaohs scored, the Nightwings hit them right back. The Simulation Football League is presented by APM Music, Production Music Library, and Custom Music House. By Extraordinary Everest, heartfelt messages on the most extraordinary place on earth. By Harry's Razors, all you need for a close, comfortable shave. And by Bit Central and Fuel transforming SFL Media in 2019 as Vega returns up to the 24 yard line, six and a half to go in the first half. And I'm being told that uh, Jack calls himself the Wolverine. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. You know, he may end up, you know, if he keeps playing the way he's playing right now, his nickname may become MVP. I mean, he is playing such a complete overall game for a back. One that we haven't seen in a long time. So two backs and two receivers. First and 10 at the 24. The Pharaohs putting it on the night wings offensively. But can Loa still active? That's his third catch of the night. Second down and one. And there's an updated look at the quarterback numbers. Miller at 73. Yeah, and the one name that we haven't heard yet for Denver on along their wide receiver core cam is Giacomo Jones. You know, their leading wide receiver in catches with 39 receptions and uh, 632 yards and six touchdowns. So expect him to get a little bit more in the game plan as this game progresses. Second down and one of the 32. Miller to throw, and Miller fires. Caught first down. Kinloa again. He is pac manning out there. Four receptions in a first down. And we've been seeing, you know, tight ends take a more dominant presence in a lot of these SFL. I love it. Offenses, yeah, and it's been great. The resurgence of the of the tight end has been wonderful for this league. Heavy set here, halfway through the second. Denver on the move again at the 43-yard line, and they flip it out to the fullback, who's got a lot of space on the outside. It quickly closes, six-yard pickup. That is Steve Ioki on the outside. Yeah, just a perfect game uh, play call, excuse me, there as the fullback was wide open out in the flat. And it's just a gimme for six yards and, and making this a, just a second and four, really opening up the playbook here. Second down, 5.03 to go in the game of the week. Pharaoh's up two touchdowns. Hand off to McChesney, and Jared McChesney's got a first down to the 45-yard line. And another strong run for McChesney unofficially. Logan Jack with 68 yards on 12 carries, and McChesney before that run, 28 yards on seven carries. And Cam, we've seen these running backs have so much success just going north-south. Anytime we've seen them go to the outside, it's been a little bit of a struggle. 
out of the gun. This is the first time we've seen empty out of Denver tonight. Miller on a first down and 10, getting aggressive. One-handed catch down the field by Vega. And Steven, he might be the most impressive role-playing wide receiver in the SFL. And Cam, that's saying something, because we've had some role players here in the SFL to make some incredible plays, even in the championship game. Uh, so to say that these guys don't matter, they absolutely do. They have made some of the best plays in the SFL, and just showing you right there the importance that these role players have on a team's success. 4-10 to go. Denver back in scoring position. Logan Keel is at the top of the screen. Keel with two grabs for 27 yards, but Kinloa has been the top target of the night. Jones a bit quiet with Arrington on him. That's a sack in the backfield, a nine-yard loss. Holman Fletcher gets there. Yeah, Cam, and this puts them out of field goal range. That's, that's, that's an amazing job by this defense to get pressure finally. We need to see more pressure on both sides. We've seen the impact pressure can have on that pick six earlier tonight. That may take him out of Jackman's range or just on the outskirts of it. Can't take another sack here. Miller going to dump it off short. Keel lost the ball, and it's recovered by Gary uh, Bertier for a first down. Wow, Cam. Now, are we going to get a chance to look at this? I think he did bring that ball in and uh, had enough time to make a football move. Yeah, that spin is what got him. A, little, a hand by McDaniel knocks that ball away yeah that's a fumble in my eyes coach vega wanting to talk about this another harry's close shave close call challenge but i'm with you steven i, I think this is a legit fumble here yeah well they have committees that, <laughs> that go over this have gone over this season over season trying to define what is a catch and here i believe oh, he brings sure. that ball in and makes that spin move that should be enough to constitute a fumble I feel even better about it after looking at the review. He definitely, I mean, he had even a step on that, and Vega's going to lose a timeout, and that's a double whammy for Denver. Now they got to figure out how to stop this Pharaoh's offense that has been smoking here tonight. New Orleans is fifth in the league in points, right behind Denver, who's fourth in points per game. We talked about those challenges coming back to haunt these teams, and, and we're seeing it right now. Jack's the lone man in the backfield with 3.33 to go in the first half. Denver reeling. They need him to make a play defensively. Jack on the outside. And Jack gets rid of the defender. I think that might have been Sawchuck. He was run out of bounds. Only a four-yard pickup. But Logan Jack is just disappointing all the night wings on defense. Yeah, Cam. And, boy, you got to put your money on Jack if it's one-on-one -on -one with, you would think a linebacker may have the advantage there. But just Jack is just so powerful with that stiff arm, able to get those extra yardage just because of his power. 126 QBR for Xander Gold. He's having a really good game tonight. Second and six, hand off to Jack, and Logan Jack won't get anywhere. Maybe a yard on the play. They're going to give him one officially, third and five. Phillips with the tackle. And that's just a good job, I think, of, of that defensive line, especially Baca, just closing up those rushing lanes and not giving Jack those easy yards that he's been getting right up the middle. Xander Gold, number one quarterback rating in the SFL, which is saying something, 104.7. 24 touchdowns, just 13 picks. That pass is caught for another first down to Deezer Powell. And, Stephen, you've been in this league a long time. New Orleans does not have the most uh, veteran coaching staff. They've been in the league for a few years getting their, getting their feet wet, but... To get a 104.7 QBR, I mean, it's been an impressive run for Gold. Yeah, and there's a misnomer that he's throwing a lot to the running back. Surely he is, and that, that is bumping up his efficiency. But we've watched games camp where Gold will routine, routinely, routinely excuse me, go down the field. And he's going down the field there, and what a dot to Matt Wolf for a first down of the night wing. 32-yard line, a pretty, pretty pass. Don't sleep on this second-year receiver, Matt Wolf, 6'6", 240. People think he's just a possession receiver, but no, he can go and run this post route and go deep and bring the ball down for you. The official got in the way of B.J. Armstrong there, kind of split him. The safety was coming in over the top, but that certainly affected the route and kind of an unlucky play from 
Denver's defense there. That is the two-minute warning, the quip two-minute warning here on the MeUndies You Vote Fan Night game of the week where the Pharaohs are in command. Two minutes to go, first and 10 of the Denver 32. Check down over to Jack. Jack breaks a tackle, and Logan Jack still going, gets nine yards. Steven, he stayed up so long that the guy that uh, tried to tackle him initially ended up coming back to help make the tackle. Well, I think well, the Wolverine is making defenders tired out there, tired of holding him up, trying to wait for some defense help to come over and get this big fella down. Second and one of the 23, Denver has had no answer for New Orleans offense, and they have gotten everybody involved tonight. Powell has five catches, Wolf has three catches, Jack has five catches, and Xander Gold just killing it right now. Well, there were a lot of questions when New Orleans decided to invest a majority of their salary cap on defense and limit themselves to just four offensive stars, but we're seeing it's a formula for success tonight. First and 10 of the 21, Jack gets another first down to the 11, and this has gotta be the one of the best offenses in league history with just four offensive stars. 52 seconds to go in the second quarter, and on to Jack again, and Jack not gonna get much of anywhere, and Steven, they could be in trouble here in this no huddle. Yeah, I'd like them to run a time, get a timeout or an incomplete pass and stop the clock. And Gold uh, pass out of the uh, out of that formation gets it out to Jack and stops the clock. So, a couple of runs right quick to Jack, and then he makes his sixth catch of the night. I think two missed opportunities there within ten yards of the end zone to really get two quality shots. Now you're going to get basically one shot, although you can get a first down without getting in the end zone. But I really feel like they don't. Get it here. They're gonna. They're gonna get. They're gonna have to go for a field. Out of the gun is Gold. Four receivers, three to the left side, including Powell. Bottom of the screen. Gold back to pass. Dumps it off short, and there's just not enough blockers out there. Denver swarms the receiver. I think that was Jack. It was, and the uh, Pharaohs will inexplicably call a timeout here. They did not need to do that to kick a field goal. Well, Cam, I think it's a it's a good move by Gold. You know, he's only a second-year receiver. We forget that because of these numbers. But instead of pressing and trying to get into the end zone, he saw no one open, and he went to Jack, knowing Jack can make things happen in the open field. So this is a chip shot, 22-yard field goal. The kicker, Zen Lee, for the Pharaohs. And the field goal from 22 is up and good. And New Orleans takes a 24-7 lead. There's still 31 seconds left because New Orleans decided to call that timeout, and hopefully it doesn't come back to bite them. But, Cam, I think they have to feel really good about themselves going into halftime. Now, that take it, the, the, the score stays the same here in the next 31 seconds. We've, we've seen many things happen within that kind of time span. But if it stays the way it is, I think New Orleans has to be very comfortable about going into halftime over the league's most dominant team this year. From the five, this is Vega on the return, past the 20, up to the 26-yard line. And that's where uh, Denver will start their next possession. Quip Design delivers simple ways to keep your mouth healthy with time vibrations, brush head refills for $5, refilled every three months. Covered for life with free shipping for life. Use the link posted in the chat, and your purchase will help support the SFL through our partnership. Quip a more wholesome clean. So Denver has one last chance to get something going here in the first half. A heavy set, and McChesney gets absolutely nowhere. And I think Denver was hoping maybe McChesney would break one, but since he cannot, they'll just take it to the locker room. Yeah, and try to make some halftime adjustments and get back into this game. This is an ultra-confident team, though, here in Denver. They know that they can overcome this, and they can overcome uh, this deficit very quickly with the explosive offense. They're going to get one more playoff. It's a dump down to Logan Keel to stat pad a little bit. He took a heavy hit, and that ends the first half. Both quarterbacks playing some pretty good ball, but that pick six was super costly from Miller. Rolliman Hood getting that pick six, the first of his career, and that ends the first half of play.
New Orleans, 24 to seven, trying to improve to seven and three. And the 2K Sports Halftime Report is coming up next. By the way, special happy birthday to Zig Washington, who's on that defensive line of New Orleans, celebrating a B-Day tonight. All right, first half stats and highlights. New Orleans winning every category. Not overly dominant, but very efficient. Yeah, Cam, I think it's been a near perfect game for them on both sides of the ball. Uh, able to li limit uh, this Denver, this explosive Denver offense that averages 30 points a game, limiting them to just a single touchdown in the first half. And then offensively, we've seen them have really uh, a really balanced offensive philosophy, attacking both through the air and uh, on the ground. And, uh, as we're seeing there, that pick six was certainly a pivotal moment. It had not only effect on the scoreboard, but certainly on the momentum of this New Orleans team at home and really propelled them to this early lead. But, Cam, I, I'm a little bit shocked here. I thought Denver would put up more of a fight than we're seeing tonight. And uh, I, I, I just I don't think they have an answer for this New Orleans offense so far. Haven't really put any pressure on Xander Gold. Uh, and, and that is something that you have to do and, and haven't been able to stop Logan Jackson. Nothing really working defensively for them, but but on the offensive side of the ball, it's still this Nightwings offense. They just haven't taken advantage of as many opportunities as we've seen them do in previous games. Now, I think that most people would consider Denver at least in the championship conversation, but since they're losing by 17 right now, let's focus on New Orleans, as you see, McDaniel was the one that actually ended up forcing that fumble. What do you think of this New Orleans team, Stephen? That they could be seven and three if they win tonight. Can this team win a championship with four offensive stars? Yeah, I think they can. I mean, I think they showed us tonight what they've done offensively is they have utilized every single one of their stars to their maximum potential. There is no room for them to really squeeze out anything more than what they've done already. And, and, and then they have some role players that can step up at times, and that's what you really need. Uh, you need those players that aren't necessarily uh, hitting your salary cap to make impactful plays. We've seen that from them tonight. And this defense, boy, let's talk about this defense. They've invested so much in it, and I, they're just growing and getting better with each game. Denver is the fourth highest scoring offense in the SFL coming into the game. They have just seven First half points. This is from the six yard line. Vega on the return. And Vega only gets up to the 28. Shan Varner, Stephen Mullinex, Cameron Irvine here with you. The week 10 fan night game of the week. And don't forget, Sunday, March 31st, same time, same place, same beautiful 1080 picture. Uh, the Twitch front page will be ours. Blitz Live returns for the final night of regular season action in terms of. Uh, major playoff implications and we'll see it all go down live here on Twitch. That's going to be a lot of fun. That's in three weeks. That pass is nearly intercepted as Giacomo Jones, who only had one catch in the first half, was the target. Yeah, Cam, and that was Mac McDaniel again, really known more as a run stopper, but able to get in there and knock that ball away. I mean, this kid's got a presence. This, uh, this rookie, undrafted linebacker, came in and it's just really shocked the league by his defensive prowess. Denver trying to get back in it. Uh, the third quarter starts with an incompletion. Three receivers all to the far left side of Miller and he'll swing it the other way to McChesney and McChesney rumbles nearly getting a first down. Tank Bennett saved that first down but pretty play design there to set up a third and short. Yeah Cam almost kind of like a looked like a little bit of a trick play there. Didn't Couldn't Maybe the defense couldn't identify McChesney, but I like that the, the guy was holding the ball with both hands. He, he didn't want to fumble that ball. Two receivers, and the handoff goes to McChesney, and he just got that first down. New Orleans has been stellar on third and short tonight, but Denver keeps the drive alive. Yeah, Cam, and we talked about rushing to the outside. It's just been a dangerous proposition tonight, and a lot of the defenders are getting free on the outside while the middle has been wide open for the most part. 10.03 to go in the third quarter. Three receivers, Miller under center. Four down linemen for the Pharaohs, including the birthday boy, Washington. For Miller, back to pass. And Josh Miller fires, caught by Keel. Keel also near a first down 
to the 49 yard line. How many times have we seen second or third and inches or one yard tonight? Yeah, a lot, and that bodes well for both of these offenses because they have the type of running backs that can convert that easy for you. But on second and inches, Cam, I'd actually like to see the offense take a shot down the field here. Maybe try to get them deep. Well, hand off to McChesney, and McChesney's got a first down. Stays patient in the backfield. Ends up actually getting about nine on the carry. Unofficially 47 yards on 11 carries for McChesney so far. And Denver's in New Orleans territory. Well, you can't blame him for calling old number 32 here to go ahead and get you the first down. You know, uh, this guy has been running like a monster. Both of these running backs really running well between the tackles tonight. Almost a clinic on how to do so. 9.08 to go, third quarter. Denver staying poised, down 17, but putting together a good drive here two minutes into the third. Two receivers, one to either side for Miller. Miller, three-step drop, fires short to Jones. Jones with a catch, gain of seven. To the Faro 36-yard line. He's been trying to work that inside a little bit more than we're used to seeing. Jones uh, has typically been a deep threat for this squad, but they're trying to use him a little differently tonight. Yeah, Cam, and, and you know what? We'll talk about Denver and, and them coming off a loss. You know, they, they have seven straight wins prior to their loss to London last week. Uh, and and, and, and you want to have some wins under your pocket when you go into the playoffs. Well, that's a nice stop. Yeah, great stop there. McChesney, no gains. or bring up third and three. Go ahead, Steven. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't mean to talk through the play. Yeah, you're but right. I just wanted to finish my point here. You know, Denver, you want to build momentum going into the, the, the playoffs in the postseason. At 7-1, and one, you're likely going to go into the playoffs. So these wins here they're, they're in their last uh, three games, excuse me, four games, are important. They've got to come away with uh, some victories. But Chesney's not going to get the first down. So on second and... About three, they hand it to him two more times, and McChesney once again cannot get to it. So I think this should prompt a Jackman field goal here unless they're going to try to punch it through. Boy, wouldn't that be something. Yeah, this would be the side of the field they'd want to do it. Two in the backfield. Would they actually dare? A field goal would make it a two-score game. They've taken almost four minutes off this clock, and boy, he didn't even wait to bleed the clock all the way down. Miller bails on the hard count quickly, and maybe, Stephen, they weren't trying to hard count at all. Maybe they were hoping to get a look out of the defense, didn't get it, and said, well, we're, we're definitely not running a play here. That could be it. Also, you know, if one of his own guys on the offensive line jumps, that takes them out of field goal range. So this will be a 49-yarder, more than likely, maybe 50. It's going to be right at 50 for Kramer Jackman. Jackman has been outstanding all season long. He is 19 of 19 coming in, and the field goal is good from 50 yards, and he had a little bit of room to squeeze in uh, another kick from a few more yards out, 24-10. Well, that's why you pay your kicker the big bucks to make clutch kicks like this. And we may look back on this field goal as the catalyst for something reigniting here in this Nightwings offense. But first up, the defense has got to slow down this hot Pharaoh's offense. Aaron Arrington on the return, been a bit quiet in the return game uh, so far this season. Does have one return for a score from the goal line, Arrington. Past the 20, and Arrington gets lit up at the 23-yard line. The Simulation Football League is brought to you in part by Matt Doyle Designs, the official design partner of the SFL. By MediaTek Institute. Visit mediatech.edu for diploma programs. Turn your passion into your profession. And by MeUndies, the world's most comfortable underwear for men and women. And please, if you're interested in purchasing Quip and Harry's and uh, movement and uh, MeUndies products, and make sure that uh, before the season's out that you pick some up as that pass is caught wide open, Matt Wolf got over the top of the defense and lift the lid off. Touchdown, New Orleans, they're back up by 20. And Cam, this is what we expect to see out of Deezer Powell, the best deep threat in the game, but Matt Wolf says, hold on, I am more than just a possession receiver. I can make plays like this, the corner route, it's great separation from the defender. This guy is underrated for his speed, and he shows you a lot of the turbo jets right there. 
That's the second time B.J. Armstrong's been burned tonight. He's having a little bit of a rough night, and this defense has just had no answers. New Orleans, I've been impressed, uh, Stephen, with their balance. They've been able to bludgeon it up the middle. They've hit the outside. They've thrown some uh, swings out to the running back, some slants inside. I mean, they've just given you everything tonight. Yeah, and I think the more important thing, Cam, is New Orleans believes. They believe they are a contender. They... Uh, they are not bowing down to this 7-1 and one record. They came in here expecting to come out with a win, ex and believe they were the better team, and believe they can make some noise in the playoffs and even win a championship. So 7-15 to go. Now it's a full three-score game here, or three-score deficit for the Nightwings, and uh, Josh Miller up a creek just a bit. Going to have to work efficiently. Uh, to get some points here from the eight-yard line. Vega on the return, and Vega frees a crowd at the 30. And Miller will come back out. He's been uh, pretty efficient tonight. That pick six looms large, though, and really those two plays, Stephen, are the difference between this being a seven and a 21-point game. Right, Cam, and, and Miller, we've seen Miller be affected by the pass rush. A couple talented defensive tackles in Zinn Washington, and Ray West on the other side of the ball, can he control himself with, and all that traffic and get this team back in the game? Miller hit as he threw, passes caught on the outside by Jones. And we haven't really seen, I think we've seen one sack tonight uh, for New Orleans. Haven't seen a lot of sacks, but a ton of pressures have forced some errant throws. Yeah, that's another misnomer here in the SFL. You know, we can't judge defensive tackles and defensive ends by their sack right. total alone. Their impact on the game through quarterback pressures is something that isn't kept on the stat line, but it affects the score in every single game. Hand off to McChesney, he's got a first down and then gets picked up and thrown down by Aaron Arrington. The hardest hit of the night is McChesney slow to get up, but Denver keeps the chains moving. Yeah, but McChesney delivers his own blows and look at the speed here. So we're seeing it in a little bit of a slow motion here, but. Just picks up so much speed, able to knock 20 off, 28 off him. But effectively, what it did is just gave Aaron Arrington time to come up and lay the wood. Denzel Maverick leading the way for defensive tackles with 13 and a half, but Gibley Do is still leading the league in sacks with 17 this season. Alex Dominguez a quiet nine and a half. Miller's pass is caught by Jones over the top of the defense. That's the first time we've seen Aaron Arrington get burnt tonight. And Denver's got a first down of the Faro 29. Yeah, I told you, it's only a matter of time before Giacomo Jones is going to make his presence felt. And in this kind of situation where the onus kind of shifts from McChesney to Miller, we're going to need to see more big plays like this out of this receiving core and this tight end. Eventually making the tackle there was Kappa Jones at free safety for New Orleans. This New Orleans defense with... Eight players to watch on that side of the ball. Washington West, Retier, McDaniel, Arrington, Hood, Jones, and Bennett. Two receivers to either side of Miller, and he'll flip it outside to Kinloa, who was spread out wide as the tight end. Kinloa makes, I believe, is either his fifth or sixth grab as you look at the updated numbers and golds. Perfect evening. Yeah, Cam, I hate that when a receiver or a tight end kind of falls over. You kind of look over at your equipment guy and go, do you have the right cleats on? I mean, why is he falling? Why does he just little, kind of do a little twirl there and go up the field? Uh, but, hey, you know what? On second down, on first down, excuse me, he'll take that four-yard game. And off. Oh, McChesney hurdled the defender and then got uh, just right into the ribs. McDaniel's helmet for no gain. Well, we don't see many defensive plays in the top ten, but maybe that should be a consideration. Catching McChesney in midair and putting him on his back. Wow, McDaniel, another highlight from the kid. Third down and six, and Denver has not been too good on third down tonight. Miller back to throw. We'll fire it. Oh, man, I thought McDaniel was gone. Had it in his grasp, Stephen. It actually looked like he had it for a moment. Yeah, he's got those white receiver gloves on too. Should should help him stick to that ball a little bit. But yeah, an opportunity there to really put this game away. But just what what uh, instincts by the linebacker to be able to cut in front of the receiver like that. 
Well, McDaniel wrecked that drive. He was all over the field. Yeah. And going back to Kinloa's uh, uh, falling down there on a ball that was just a little bit underthrown, perhaps. Um, if you're in the owner's box, that probably makes you just throw your hands up and go back to the wet bar and say, man, what, what do we got in here? That field goal's good from 41 for Jackman, so he tacks on another to his resume. 21 of 21 now on the season, and uh, it's an 18-point game. Denver's going to need some defense. Yeah, Cam, and, and if you're if you're the night wing, certainly uh, this isn't this – isn't where you want to be in this game you're, you're playing a road big uh, road game excuse me uh you you're coming off your first loss of the season you don't want to back that up with another loss and then if you think teams are questioning you or, or people are on the outside are questioning you before they're really going to be questioning you now with two back-to-back -back losses denver's really got to get back into this game 5.06 to go, one yard deep in the end zone. Arrington will bring it out. Arrington only gets to the 23 as he's turned backwards. Looked like he may have rolled an ankle there. Arrington, I feel like, might skip leg day every once in a while. <laughs> he's a little bit of a string bean out there. He might be a ghost, hard to find in the, in the weight room. Huh? Oh, man, here we go again with the ghost <laughs> thing. Every time you bring that up, it makes me, like, kind of twitch a little bit because that game was so... Is so burned into my memory. That uh, was so crazy. It's a legend. First and 10 at the 23. 5.01 to go in the third for Xander Gold. And Gold hit as he threw. Is almost picked off. That was Nicholas Warner. Bandito applied the pressure. And finally, Denver's defensive front, which has been pretty quiet tonight, gets some pressure on Xander. Yeah, but I love this mentality by the Pharaohs, Cam. They're not taking it easy. They're not trying to run out the clock with Jack. They're going deep. They want to put another seven on the board, and they want to put the Nightwings away here in the third quarter. This is Powell at the top of the screen. Only a few yards separate the corners and receivers. New Orleans has some of the biggest, baddest weapons on the outside in the league. Going that way, Powell over Matthew Lee down the sideline. Warner trying to bring him down, cannot. McCree won't catch him. It's another touchdown, and it's a route for New Orleans. He had one job, Nightwing's defense. One job. Keep this man contained. This guy is the best receiver in the SFL for a reason. He kills you deep. And with this, this quarterback, Xander Gold, throwing lasers out there, and the speed that this guy has is unbelievable, Camp. The best free agent I think we've ever had in this league. Powell, the former renegade, I'm sure the... Oklahoma City Renegades are sitting at home going, man, wish we still had that guy. Although they have some talented receivers. These are Palace at another level in New Orleans. And this is a bit of a surprising blowout at this point as New Orleans has had no problems with the Nightwings. Okay, that's the one guy that we targeted. We were like, these are Powell. He is, he can destroy games. We know that. We've seen it happen over and over again. And I don't think we're talking about it enough, Cam. You know, you've been with this league in its entirety. Before it was what it is in its current iteration. Have we ever seen a guy play one season, kind of a mediocre season on a team, and then explode into superstardom this quickly? I don't think we've ever seen it before. That's a tough question. I do have one in mind. I'll, I'll share with the rest of SFL Nation here in a moment. But it was some time ago, before your time, Stephen, as Vega... Gets it up past the 30, up to the 32-yard line, but it's a great question. How about Ayanojo Abaratsubo? Ah, Season the, three played yes. in uh, played in Honolulu, then signed as a free agent with Minneapolis in that historic offense. He had all six touchdowns in the championship game, and uh, and he just, I mean, overnight blew up. And we haven't seen a receiver in the SFL that was as small and as quick as him since. It's uh, it's unbelievable as McChesney picks up three. Right. And a diminutive small receiver in, in the league has gone away from that. We're, we're looking at these 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, monsters now. But back in the day, it was a little guy who dominated as a receiver. I'd love to see another guy of that size come in and just wreck the league. 
TJ CAG SFL, 300 bits for blowout and time for announcer stories, as he puts it. Still, still a, a game that you know, that just just because of the amount of time that's left, you never know. But McDaniel is winning the matchup with McChesney tonight, no doubt. Yeah, McDaniel's putting his signature on this game and it's starting to take over. But look, this is a dangerous Denver Nightwings team. Everybody in the league has been put on notice. When they went 7-0 and to start the season, this is a team that New Orleans is doing exactly what it needs to do. They are not letting off the gas. Four receivers pass caught by Logan Keel. That's uh, just shy of a first down, so Denver's going to have to punt it away in there. That uh, was kind of a, a roughed-up dog licking its wounds type of play as Denver quickly gets off the field. And, Cam, this is an important statement game for New Orleans if they're able to come out with a victory here they go right into their bye week after this so they're going to go you know if this score holds they're going to going into it at an all-time high really coming off and beating the best team in the SFL they're going to go to Tulsa uh, in week 12 and then they've got to face a really tough London team so this could be a very important launching off point for New Orleans if they want to go deep into the playoffs. Talk about two teams that have been on fire colliding with New Orleans and London in week 13. That's definitely going to be one of those front page games. I know London lost today, but if you watch that game, they, they basically did everything they possibly could to win. I mean, I mean, London didn't really do much of anything wrong. And Tulsa just, Ashley Jackson, man, she had a banner day. That was a fun game this afternoon if you missed out. Xander Gold over the top. That pass is caught. What was McCree doing? Pass caught by Bischoff in the slot. And Cam, I called this one of the, and I still believe it, one of the best defensive secondaries in the SFL. And look, that's not a bad play. I mean, McCree had an opportunity to get in front of the receiver. The receiver just made a better play. And we're seeing that all over the field here for New Orleans. Man, just one of those nights right now for the Denver Nightwings. This is uh, it's got to be a little frustrating for them. Gold fires it down the field. Oh, it's intercepted, and there you go, Denver. Got yourself a play. That is Phillips, I believe, Deontay Phillips getting the pick, and Denver not ready to go home yet. And taking advantage of a Pharaohs team that's being really aggressive, <laughs> even despite their lead. And, you know, I think they'll take that. I think they'll take that interception at this point of the game in exchange for their aggressiveness that has gotten them into this position. But certainly an opportunity now for Denver to make a little noise. Denver will play the 4-4 four and four Legion twice in the last three weeks. They'll also have a home game against Indianapolis, which at the beginning of the season they played the Spitfire and won on a game-winning field goal. That passed top of the fullback for two. Right, so it really sets up really well for them moving forward. Although neither of those teams are pushovers, both of them have shown that they can beat some of the more elite teams here in the SFL. But I think for Denver, it, take a little solace in the fact that this is a New Orleans team that could certainly be in the playoffs, meet you in the playoffs, and, and, and maybe try to take those wins later in this season to help propel you into the postseason. Yeah, and Logan Keel did the best he could with that, but... I mean, just nowhere to go. No gain on the play. Keel with his sixth grab of the night. There you see Matt Wolf, 116 yards and two touchdowns on just four receptions. Right, and then we're going to be talking about Deezer Powell and probably at the end of this game of continuing this season just because of the season he's having. Matt Wolf have an equal, having an equally as good a season on Third and eight for Miller. Got to pick up something here off the interception. Pass caught wide open is Vega. Vega's made two tremendous catches over the middle. Bennett on the tackle, but Denver into New Orleans territory. Well, they're spreading New Orleans out, and New Orleans is taking away all the primary weapons. So that's where a role player like Vega comes in, and he's going to have to come in and make some big plays for these night weeks, even to sniff getting back into this game. 123 to go in the third. I think it's important for Denver. So you got to score before the quarter, right? you got to get this to a three-score game heading into the fourth quarter. Because otherwise, time's not going to be on your side. Free play here on the offside. Miller hit as he threw, but again, finds Kinloa down the field. That's Kinloa's uh, sixth reception. And another first down coming for Denver. 
Well, if there's one positive Denver can take out of this game is that connection between Miller and Kinloa has been really great tonight. Something we haven't seen in previous games. If they can continue to grow this chemistry, that could really be important for them down the road. Here's another look at it. And the pressure right at the quarterback's feet. Still able to maintain composure and find his t big tight end for the first down. 38-13, but Denver driving again. 105 to go in the third. They certainly have not been put down easy tonight. 25 yards away from pay dirt. Miller going to throw again. Miller dumps it off, sliding to make the play. Oh, Keel took a vicious move. That is totally uncalled for for Rolliman Hood, who then, get, who then gets back up and shoves Keel in the back. Yeah, the very definition of a defenseless player. Uh, he just needs to be touched down. There's no reason to make that hit. You've got the lead. You're not frustrated like the other team would probably will be now. Now we may see some fisticuffs on the field if this escalates. That was a total cheap shot play there by Rolliman Hood. Pretty surprising uh, considering that uh, New Orleans has played a very uh, even-keeled game. First in goal at the 10 now off the penalty for Denver trying to take some momentum from it. They'll hit McChesney in the flat. McChesney takes too long to get going. Going to lose a yard. Hood on the tackle. But Cam, if they are, if Denver's able to get in the end zone here before the end of the quarter, I don't know, they may not be able to get a playoff, but boy, these mistakes by New Orleans have allowed them to get back into this game. They're running up the line, trying to get one more playoff here. Split backs in the backfield, second and goal at the 11, and they will with one second to go. Hit it off to McChesney and the birthday boy. No, that check that, that was Ray West in the backfield making the play, and that ends the third quarter. Denver is driving, but New Orleans trying to make a red zone stop all over the Night Wings on the Fan Night Game of the Week. Stay tuned. So now it's third and goal from the 12 for Miller. Miller, three-step drop, looking for somebody to get open. Terrible play. A two-yard loss as Hood makes another tackle. He's been everywhere just here in the past couple of minutes. And Denver's going to have to bring Jackman out again. They have no choice. they got to get this to a three-score game. And, Cam, that was all about the press coverage. Able to push both of the receivers on both sides who are running short out routes. Push them off their routes, make them come back to the quarterback, and basically no gain there and a fourth down. So the field goal for the Night Wings is good. Jackman is now three of three tonight. It is a three score game again, but the sense of urgency for Denver's defense has to be there. And we were talking off air before the broadcast, Stephen, about this. Uh, but New Orleans really has. I mean, they've, they've somewhat been trailblazers here with this really aggressive uh, press coverage with excellent corners that can make the plays on the outside. A, a lot of times in SFL history, corners have not really been uh, too valuable to team defense, but New right. Orleans is, is kind of changing the game here with what they've been able to do defensively. Yeah, Cam, we've seen teams really, I think, overinvest in the cornerback position and then not know how to scheme them properly and how to use them. And I think what we're seeing is a, a, a huge investment by New Orleans on defense, but then their, their, their scheme is so diverse and so specific on when they use that press, when they use the bump, when they back off the playing zone. It's just been a terrific uh, work by the defensive coordinator this season. 10-18 to go. Denver has got to get a stop now. On a slant caught first. I mean, that is ridiculous. How fast was that ball out of Gold's hands and into Wolves, who now has a buck 25? This kid has a Dan Marino arm. We've said it for a long time. This kid's got a golden arm, can make all the throws. And, you know, he's got two of the most talented wide receivers in the league. But at this point, Cam here in the fourth quarter. I'm looking to Logan Jack to salt this one away. 
Out of the eye, New Orleans staying aggressive, but this time hands it off to Jack. First down and more. Blocking beautiful up the field. That's your ever scroll block of the game. The offensive line just, just sticking it to Denver. And when you can do all of it like this, Cam, there's just no answers on defense. They're running the ball. They're passing the ball. They're doing whatever they want to to this Denver defense. A defense that we've talked about ranked ninth in the league, allowing just 23 points by opponents, already allowing 38 points by this really hot Pharaohs offense. 9.25 to go in the fourth. New Orleans trying to salt this one away and improve to 7-3. It would drop them from 7-2. Their lead would be just a half a game. What a block again for New Orleans. A couple of them. First down to the Nightwing 32. They're in scoring range. And this Nightwing defense has zero answers. And this is why they do attempt to go to outside at times for the big play. And actually... That play might not have been designed. They'll go to the outside. Logan Jack just seeing all the congestion in the middle. Breaks it outside. You're talking about the Everscope block of the game. That was a huge block right there to spring him for an extra five to seven yards. Ever scroll by movement blocks blue light to protect your eyes from digital screens. Don't hurt your eyes by checking out SFL action. Protect them and see every moment by using the promo code simulation at bellapurchasefrommovement.com as gold will flip this one out to Jack for no gain. A portion of your purchase supports the SFL through our partnership, movement, premium watches, sunglasses, and accessories. So here we are again. We are in field goal range on Denver's side of the field. And, and they're rating. just running the clock and doing, yeah, 141.7 rating by gold. Perfect tonight. That's crazy. Two backs, two receivers. Second down and 10 for gold. Gold fires up. Oh, what a play by Marty McCree. How did he even see the ball? Stuck a big mid up there and knocked it down. That was the best play of the night for Denver's defense. Yeah, you're right, Cam. Other than that interception, I think that knockdown beautifully done. Uh, if Xander Gold would have just thrown it, maybe lobbed it right. just a little bit further up, would have missed him by the fingertips, and that would have been a completed play. This is huge. Third and 10 at the 32. New Orleans not known for their kicking game. Gold standing in the empty here. Five in the box for Denver. They're gonna bring four. Gold quick throw, and again, Matthew Lee playing too far off Deezer Pal, and Pal stretches it out for the first down. Yeah, Cam, and they recognize it. They recognize it, and they send all their receivers on the all slants route. And again, we see Gold deliver a crisp laser right into the hands of the outstretched arms of the receiver. Powell and Wolf now each over 100. Gold dumps it off short. And a nice tackle made by Sawchuck in the open field, a three yard gain. So second and seven coming up, 7.42 to go. So, Stephen, the, the uh, number one team in the power rankings lost again this week. That was Tallahassee getting upset by Houston. These are your week 10 headlines so far. So, Stephen, with that said, who is the best team in the SFL right now, in your opinion? Golly, Cam, it's hard to say because we've just seen New Orleans really just dismantle the number one team. If, you know, the Pharaohs certainly should be up there in consideration as a, another good defensive play knocks the ball away from Deezer Powell there. But but I, just having seen them, you know, I'm just, uh, I, I, you know, I'm just so full of what I've seen from them tonight against this great Nightwings team. you got to put New Orleans up there you got to put Baltimore up there, especially when they've been able to come away with victories against Alaska. I don't think by any means Tallahassee's out of it. I don't think Ta Alaska's any means out of it. Sioux Falls is certainly. I mean, there's a lot of teams. I think maybe the more important thing we come away with, Cam, is there's still a lot to be undecided with three weeks to go. Look at this slant route. I mean, a dot right in between three night wings. For the first down, it's first and goal of the three. I mean, we're talking about the teams around the league, and we're watching Xander Gold, who's a, I mean, a dark horse MVP. This is an exceptional performance in prime time at home with all the bright lights. This handoff goes to Jack, and Jack nearly scored. Tackle by Phillips. Wow, Cam, I thought he almost got in the end zone there. I thought he actually almost inched it over, but. You're right, Cam. Xander Gold has got to be in the discussion for, for MVP. Just a terrific season, an efficient season, leading the league in touchdowns right now. Uh, 
what can you say that hasn't already been said? I can only say this so many times about their offense and have such a glowing review as they score. And that's another touchdown. 44 points up on the Denver Nightwings tonight. Uh, this has just been an absolute clinic and something that I don't think that we very much expected coming in. No, and I don't think fans expected it either. They voted this game as the fan night game of the week, thinking this was going to be a highly competitive game. And it's just been really New Orleans playing per perfect football on both sides of the ball. And it's something we haven't seen a lot of from the Nightwings, which is they're just really struggling to find answers on both sides as well. Almost never have blowouts on fan night like this as the extra oh. point is up and good. 45-16, all Pharaohs. They're on their way to 7-3. And, three. and uh, by the way, in terms of points, most points scored all time by New Orleans. We're going to look for that record, but it might be. Now they got 52 against Carolina, so uh, not a not a scoring record just yet for the Pharaohs, but they're coming up on it at 45. And Cam, you know we've seen this kind of lag from from teams that have started hot before. Uh, I think Tulsa comes to mind in their first season to me. Uh, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, they won a string of games and then it all came apart there towards the end of the season. Uh, you know, and so sometimes maybe these teams are, are, I'm not saying that Denver is, but sometimes maybe these teams are resting on their laurels a little bit. Maybe not doing as much of the homework as they need to be doing or, or they, they don't feel the pressure to have to come out with the, the most, the best game plan that they can because they, they're just riding a winning streak. Miller dumps it short to Keel. By the way, this is the most points ever given up by in uh, by the Denver Nightwings. At least since they've been Denver, we'd have to go back into the San Antonio record books to see if the Vaqueros ever gave up 45 plus, which I'm pretty sure they did. I'm sure they have. Uh, one time in that, uh, there was a shutout to Houston. I can't remember if they were on the winning end or losing end of that game, but um, at any rate, uh, tough night for the Nightwings as they'll try to get it back against Vancouver next week. That is a primetime matchup. I think that's Saturday night here on Twitch. Friday night is Mexico City, Baltimore. <clears throat> Two teams that uh, have three losses towards the top of the standings, and that'll be monstrous for playoff positioning. And Cam, I kind of want to clarify what I had to say about the game planning, you know. Uh, resting on your laurels, that may be strong. Look, it's worked for seven straight games. You know, at this point, are you making gigantic changes right. to something to? that, that has worked so well? You know, you shouldn't be. By this time in the season, every SFL team, unless you've been really struggling, has got their playbooks pretty much set. They know who they are. And, <laughs> and progression throws, you know, a wrinkle into that because your players are constantly improving in different ways. But at this point in the season, when we're just inching right up to the playoffs, the playbooks are pretty set. And that's what makes Alaska's undefeated run that much more impressive was the fact that they right. had to grapple with that every single week. Can I change this up? And and it and will it disrupt our chemistry and rhythm? And still, Alaska was able to come through unscathed um, in that incredible run. And obviously... Nobody having that run this uh, season now. Two losses is at the top of the standings. But uh, Alaska still certainly in the mix. And boy, wouldn't that be something if out of all this chaos, the Storm were able to come out with something else again. This is Logan Jack with another great run. Pickup of eight yards. Thanks to Sham Varner who's been holding down the stats tonight. Jack's over 100 yards. 129 now. Two touchdowns. 6.1 yards a carry, and we want to turn our focus to tomorrow night, Stephen. This might be the right. biggest Monday night of football in league history. The, they, these games mean so much to so many teams, and we'll get to that slate in a moment. Second and two at the 40. 4.15 to go in the fourth. Hand off to Jack, and Jack runs over another, and then Matthew Lee finally able to bring him down in the open field, only a gain of one. So tomorrow night, four games, Carolina... Playing for their lives, three and six, need to win out and get some help. They will be at Dallas, who's in the mix of all these three lost teams. Chicago will be at Alaska. Both of them are five and three, and the winner separates themselves from a wild card spot. 
or a top six spot. Sioux Falls and Vancouver are in the 10 and 11 spot right now. They play each other. And then Indianapolis, another one of those teams with six losses, needing to win out and get some help. They are at Las Vegas, who's on the outside looking in right now at four and four. As Jack is going to pick up another first down. And here is that full playoff picture for you again. Yeah, Cam, some great matchups tomorrow night for SFO fans to look forward to. As you mentioned, Carolina at Dallas, Chicago at Alaska, Sioux Falls against Vancouver, Indy at Vegas. So teams that are all in contention here that you're seeing on this on this, uh, this graphic here, all playing each other. Should be a great night of football tomorrow night. Max Jackson says, incorrect, we are 10th. Uh, check it again. Check it again. It changed with London's loss today. First and 10 of the 47, although it really doesn't matter at this point. All the tiebreakers are going to change by the end. Backups are in for New Orleans, and that is a well-deserved rest for Logan Jack and Xander Gold, who played just about as good of a game as you could possibly play. Yeah, you're right, Cam. And, you know, this Denver team, you know, it could, be, it could have nothing to do with playbooks. It could have nothing to do with their team and how good they are. Sometimes you just run into a buzzsaw. And oftentimes that's on the road. And, and you just run into just a team that just gets so hot. You no, know, you could be the best defense and offense in the NFL, and you can't break that streak. That could have happened to Denver tonight. 213 to go in the fourth quarter. Denver holding on to two timeouts here after the two-minute warning, but first they gotta get off the field. Nice play there. Made on the line. Third down and five. That'll bring up our quick two-minute warning. And this one. Shockingly turned ugly in the middle of the third quarter. 45-16. The Pharaohs routing the Nightwings on the MeUndies Uvo Fan Night Game of the Week. Shan Barner, Stephen Mullinex, Cameron Irvine with you here tonight. Third down and five at the 49. And the handoff goes outside, spinning outside, and New Orleans can't pick it up with the backup, so they'll have to punt the ball away. And uh, just to answer the question from Las Vegas about if common games matters more than head-to-head, -head, no, of course it doesn't, but because Sioux Falls and Vancouver have not played head-to-head, head-to-head head -to -head does not qualify as a tiebreaker with those three teams tied. You have to go to the next one because everyone has to play each other for that to make any sense as New Orleans punts it away. Very complicated stuff. Yeah, I don't even mess with that. I just trust what you say. <laughs> uh, it takes a special mind to figure those things out, and I leave that to more interested men. But, you know, for Denver, uh, there, there's going to be questions. Two back-to-back -back losses. Have they lost their mojo? Look, they're going to get an opportunity to, to kind of lick their wounds with two back-to-back -back home games. We talked about they're going to the face of uh, Vancouver week 11, Indy week 12. So an opportunity to really get back on the horse for them, get some of that home cooking, sleep in their own beds, get back on the horse and put the naysayers to rest. Miller throwing from his end zone and he's going to take a safety. Boy, is that a cherry on top for New Orleans tonight at home. Yeah, Cam and uh, Jerry Smith there, number 76. Able to get penetration there. Oh, as you said, those numbers are a little bit hard to read, but but yeah, that's that's just the the perfect capper for New New Orleans tonight. It it, it, it perfectly encapsulates the game, how how it's been for Denver tonight for sure. Oh man, so the Pharaohs have 47, the punt to the 28 yard line, and even a good couple of blocks on special teams. Spring the returner all the way out of the 46. That is a man we don't even have on the roster. <laughs> Boy, they are way down on the depth chart now. Irvin yeah. Brown is the backup quarterback. Wow. Yeah, Cam, looks like they're going to be able to uh, take the, the victory formation here and go ahead and run out this clock as Denver only has one timeout left. But what a job by the New Orleans Sparrows here. You know, despite it being a home game, and despite the fact that New Orleans is, is, is coming off an impressive uh, uh, an impressive win over Atlanta, 
uh, there were still questions about whether they could beat this Denver team, and boy, they put that to rest tonight, didn't they? Yeah, seven and three. Looking back on uh, what New Orleans has uh, done this season, uh, the three losses for the Pharaohs uh, include a 37-35 loss to Queen City uh, in a crazy game where Queen City had a fumble return for a touchdown on a punt return, which is very unusual uh, in the SFL. That ended up being the difference there. Um, New Orleans, you'd have to go back to week eight. They lost to Sioux Falls 24-13. The Sparrows uh, really shut them down. Really, they were the only team uh, that managed to do that. Uh, Sioux Falls has won three in a row. And uh, Farrell's also lost to Chicago 31-12. Bit of an off night in Chicago. They won't be able to ice this away, but they'll be able to punt it away, maybe for another safety. <laughs> uh, and, and we've talked about it. For the Pharaohs, uh, this is great for them going into the bye week. They've got to have just the utmost confidence. They're going to dominate the rest of the schedule and just walk into the playoffs. It's not going to be easy. At Tulsa, it's not easy. And against London, that's not going to be easy. But based on what we've seen tonight, I think most are going to believe that the Pharaohs are a playoff team and one that you probably don't want to face if you don't have to. They played some quality teams, haven't necessarily always had the best results, but had a fantastic result here tonight. 12 seconds left. So the Pharaohs are going to go to 7-3. and three. That's going to join them up with Mexico City and push them either into second or third place, depending upon tiebreakers. Denver slips to 7-2, and two, but still atop the lead or the league, but that lead is slipping. Miller trying to get something in garbage time done here. 12 seconds left, going to take a shot. Pass caught by Jones, breaks a tackle. Giacomo Jones, five, four, three. Will there be time left on the clock? Yes, with two seconds left, Jones able to get in the end zone for a garbage time touchdown. And hey, Steven, you take the little victories. Well, this is a big victory for Miller. He was just one touchdown pass away from bringing the franchise all-time passing touchdown leader, overtaking Joey Langdon, the old San Antonio Vaqueros quarterback. So congratulations to Miller. I know it's a bit of a consolation prize tonight. You're not going to be selling, celebrating any kind of victories, but certainly uh, showing you the direction that this night week's team is going as this, this guy Miller's able to eclipse Joey Langdon. So congratulations there to Josh Miller on setting that franchise record. And you know what this means, Stephen, with two seconds left, it's onside kick time, baby. Come back. <laughs> Don't call there it a comeback, go. Kramer. There you go. You know, and, uh, and look, at this point, you just take what you can get and the positives that you can pull out of this game. And, of course, if I'm Denver, I'm just trying to forget the last two weeks and focus on Vancouver coming up. Oh, the extra point's good. Two seconds left. Time for an onside kick. Maybe one more play. Denver gets a touchdown there at the end of it. And Josh Miller breaks the franchise record for touchdown passes, so we're certainly happy for him, man. He, I remember when he joined San Antonio in the middle of that season, they had the crazy kick six score, won a game. Daly Holder caught a touchdown to win that ball game. This is a bobbled ball recovered by New Orleans, and it'll actually run out the clock. So that favors the Pharaohs. But Josh Miller, man, it seems like a long time ago he joined this Nightwing squad, but he's gotten everything he deserves except, I guess, tonight's result. As that is a look at the final stats. New Orleans, not that much better than Denver in the box score, but they definitely made all the plays, all the major plays tonight. Yeah, Cam, and the, the ball bounced really in their way. And let's not forget about the fumble that uh, McDaniel caused. Uh, the pick six early in the game that really changed the momentum uh, here at home for New Orleans. And, and excuse me, Miller's got two touchdowns, and, and I miscalled that, and I apologize. He, he had broke that record on the previous uh, touchdown. But still, it still makes him the all-time leader. But certainly nothing to celebrate really for Denver tonight uh, as New Orleans. I think really made a statement about who they are in this league and 
you got to think that they're going to make some noise in the playoffs. Logan Jack finishes with 136 yards and two touchdowns. McChesney just 68 yards rushing. That's got to be down uh, near a season low. McCree, 11 solo tackles. Bennett with eight tonight. Not a lot of sacks, but tons of pressure. And the Pharaohs can sleep comfortably in their own beds there at home heading into the bye week. Yeah, that's going to be a long plane ride for Denver. A long, quiet plane ride most likely, but... Uh, Hard to take anything away from the Nightwings, Cam. They've, they've come in and they've really dominated the league early. And, and these kind of obstacles are what great teams face and overcome. Um, and, you know, unless you're a, an Alaska or a Minneapolis team, you know, there, there, there aren't many teams that don't go through losses and have to fight through them for the championship. So Denver's still in great position. Uh, tonight, I think, says a lot about New Orleans, especially defensively and how they were able to to limit one of the more explosive offenses here in this league with with Denver and and then of course offensively New Orleans continues to impress and I think they're just getting better every game. Jeremy Vegas saying good game to New Orleans. Y'all are amazing in all caps in the chat. You love to see the sportsmanship and the SFL. That's what it's all about. First class out of Jeremy Vega and the Denver Nightwings. Your extraordinary Everest player of the game tonight. It's got to be Xander Gold, doesn't it? Yeah, 23 so. of 30, QBR 135, 358 yards, three touchdowns, and just the one interception. And he made it look easy, Cam. You know, I don't think he – he didn't seem to face a lot of pressure tonight. Uh, you can see the result. He was able to sit back there and pick this very impressive Denver secondary apart. That's it. From New Orleans, for Sham Barner, Stephen Mullinex, I'm Cameron Irvine. This has been a presentation of the Simulation Football League, presented by APM Music. And from Louisiana, good night, everybody. Dilly dilly.